Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is the controller for my LX Mini speaker project I've been working on. If you haven't been following the project, I'm building a pair of speakers and this right here is a DSP 4-channel amplifier and a couple other little things all in one sleek little box. In this video I'm going to be talking about the faceplate which looks pretty simple but it has one little special trick up its sleeves. It's capacitive touch and that controls the backlights for the VU meters. So let's talk about this and how I made it. Please feel free to use the chapters to skip ahead if you want to go straight to the building and design of this. I'm going to first start with the why. Why did I choose this as a design choice? Well, when I first started making this controller, I knew that I wanted these two VU meters and I kind of wanted them inset like they are now. It looks really clean and simple. and I like the light on the VU meters. I like this backlight. It's really cool and at night it looks fun. But when you're watching a movie, you might not want that distraction or sometimes you might want them off. So I wanted that option. Now I could have easily put a switch on this front panel, but I'm just being really picky here. I feel like that switch would really maybe more intuitively be like an on-off switch, and this does not actually have an on-off switch. It's all controlled with a 12-volt uh, relay trigger back here. So I thought that might be a little confusing. I was thinking about maybe doing a knob on the front to kind of adjust the dimness of it, but once again, I didn't really want to break up the simplicity of the face, and the back panel is completely filled. There's really not even a good space for a small switch. So I was kind of joking with my wife and she kind of brought up like, oh, what if it was a touch panel? And I'm like, yes, that's the thing. I could just make this a simple touch on and off and that would actually be nice because I don't really need to adjust the brightness of it. I can kind of adjust that and have it set permanently. I just kind of either want it on, you know, during the daytime because it looks kind of cool or off if you're using it at night. And when it is on if the controller turns off it's getting power from the main power supply in the controller it will turn off so it's really only going to be on when it's playing and the 12 volt trigger is actually triggered off of the source that's coming out of this it's a um blue sound uh, node 2i and so that is the streamer that's playing into this and it's also taking the tv input into it so if there's no music playing, this is going to be off. So those backlights are only going to be on, and they're going to only be on when you want them. So the capacitive touch was a really nice way to do it. And I'm using this TTP2133. I think that's it. I'll probably correct myself in the next segment. But let's take a closer look at this little chip. So I did get it wrong. This is the TTP223 capacitive touch switch board. And it is very small, as you can see. And on the back side, we just have this little um, touch thing right there. And so the back is the capacitive touch. Let me get some light on this. It is actually very sensitive. It normally operates from like a few centimeters away. So it's extremely, extremely sensitive. So when I was testing this out, I was thinking, you know, I can probably butt this up against something metal and then actually use the metal to um, transmit that touch signal through and that ended up working. It has a couple cool little features on it. You've got like two jumpers, the A and the B, and depending on how you jumper those, it can be like a momentary, you know, on or off momentary, or you can make it into this latching mode like what I have now. So that's pretty cool. And it also has this little pad right over there up top. It is an 0201 package size, which is tiny, tiny, tiny. And you can add a capacitor there to actually change the sensitivity. And that's exactly what I'm doing because this would be way, way, way too sensitive normally. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. This is basically just sandwiched behind this faceplate. So let me show you how that's all configured. So the first step in this is machining the holes and the cutouts for the VU meters. Everything kind of mounts from the back side so I just need to have the holes and then the clearance for the flange on the VU meters machined into the back side. And I'm using the Avid CNC router for this. I could have used my Tormach for this but I really do kind of like the Avid for aluminum because it goes a lot quicker. When you have a 24,000 RPM spindle that can move very very fast you can really hog out material very quickly. Also, the faceplate is like, yeah, 16, 17 inches wide, and that's actually a little bit too wide for the Tormach. 
Granted, I don't have to like indicate the center, but eh, it's just, it's actually a relatively big piece for the little 440, but it fits perfectly fine on the Avid. So that's why I used it. I knew someone would ask. So once I got this all machined out, it was just a matter of test fitting it. And you can see here how the VU meters just kind of snug into that. And I made it like this so they sit perfectly flush on the front. So then I made this little 3D printed carrier board. So this sits on the back. You have the mounting holes for the relay module that sits back here. The VU meters come through these holes. You can see there's a little bit of a recess because just the way everything fit, there is a little bit sticking out the back. And then you actually have the touch board here mounted inside with a little bit of room for the capacitor. This is the sensitivity adjustment, basically. So that kind of goes like that. The wires fit through. You've got the relay, and this is what it looks like when it's finished. Ta-da! So this is a fully populated board. Um, you can see the 3D printed piece there. You've got the relay mounted on the back. Unfortunately, the little touch switch is not really a switch, but it can feed into a little relay module like this. So I'm using the output of the switch to go into the relay module, and then that actually switches the 12 volt line right here that then feeds into the two VU meters. It just has a simple 12 volt output, so nice and simple. So yeah, that's what it looks like. And then I can just unscrew this and show you how the thing all mates together. And there you go. So the VU meters just kind of sit inside this little 3D printed plate and the touch sensor is right there. I have a little piece of tape over the contacts. I learned that one the hard way. And then we just have tapped holes in all four corners. These are very shallow tap. They're maybe only a few millimeters deep, but that is perfectly fine. There's a little piece of foam tape behind here. You can see it sits a little bit proud. And so that kind of presses that touch sensor out. Even though this is anodized aluminum, it still actually does the thing, so no worries there. And that just kind of presses out a little bit, so when all of this is screwed and assembled together, that touch sensor is actually pressing directly into the aluminum, and nice and simple. For the wiring, this is all kind of a little messy right now, but I'll kind of explain how it's working. This is the cable for the 12 volt for the actual VU meters, this goes into the DC um, relay. And then we have the actual VU meter control board right here. It is powered off of 12 volts. I have it in a barrel jack right now, but it's eventually gonna go into this DC to DC buck converter. That is being fed by the 24 volt output, which is an auxiliary output of one of the amplifier boards over here. This buck converter is going to power the DSP module sitting back behind here, and that is going to be powered off of the other amplifier module over here. There's going to be another DC to DC buck converter up here that is going to do the 5 volts for the actual touch board. It needs 5 volts. This needs uh, 12 volts, and these things each supply 24 volts. So yeah, it's a little bit annoying, so that's why I'm going to have the three buck converters in there. I might probe around in here and see if I can find just a usable 5 volt, and maybe I can wire it directly into here, but we'll see. But yeah, that's what the inside looks like. It's um, fairly tight in there, but everything does fit. So now I have the faceplate done, the top doesn't need anything, and I have the bottom and the back all mocked up. I just need to put those on the Avid and get everything cut on them. There's just a lot of little things to cut, and I wanted to make sure all the wiring and everything was finalized before I ended up cutting all those. So that's going to be the next step, and then wire this up and this thing will be done. I'm not going to do a video on the wiring, but I'll probably do a video on the base plate and the back plate, just kind of show you how those are made. But Overall, I'm very happy with how this turned out. As you can see, I kind of turned down the brightness of them a little bit, and it's very nice. It looks really neat, and this is just really reliable. You can touch it on, touch it off, and it pretty much works just about anywhere on the case, which is nice, and obviously you can kind of get close to it, which is a bit annoying. But yeah, overall, um, I think I'm pretty happy with this solution. It'll be really nice just to kind of walk by it, turn it on, turn it off. And this is exactly the functionality I was hoping for. So thanks for watching and definitely check out those TTP223s. Kind of put those in your back pocket for some future projects that you got. They're very handy and very inexpensive. Link down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.